Hello, everyone. My name is Jared Haas, and today at Bessie the Track here, we are at Richmond, Virginia, and I'm joined by our editor and VCU graduate, Adam Cheek. Adam, how is Richmond, Virginia today? Oh, it is absolutely perfect. We had a cold front stall a few days ago that cooled everything down. It's like 80 or 85 degrees, a little bit of cloud cover coming over, and it's a great day for racing. We've got a doubleheader Xfinity at 2.30, Cup at 7.30, and it it feels great. It's great to be back at the track. It's been a couple of years, so I'm excited. I know it's excited to be back at the track, too. It's always a good experience to be at the race weekend. Adam, I want to ask, like I said, last weekend when I was with SAC, I touched on Denny Hamlin, how this was going to be a turnaround and mm -hmm. weekend because he didn't win on the regular season, and this was a fresh start, and he won the race. I'm looking at another playoff driver with Kevin Harvick. He finished fifth mm. at Darlington, and Richmond has been a relatively good track for him while he's at SRS, uh, Stuart Haas Racing, excuse me. He has eight top five finishes, but this spring he recorded his worst finish with Stuart Haas Racing. Do you expect mm. this to be a turnaround for Kevin Harvick, or do you think that fifth place finish at Darlington was a one-time thing? I think Harvick's had such a rough year that it's kind of hard to tell one way or the other, but I think it's just... Darlington was kind of at a war of attrition. You know, half the playoff drivers had problems. And at the end of it, it was more or less who was left standing. And Hamlin, Larson were those two main guys fighting for the win. But Harvick, he was there in fifth, which was surprising because he's been good at Darlington. He hasn't been good as a whole this year. I think in terms, if we're talking about how it applies to Richmond, I don't think he's going to do as well here as he normally does. And of course he didn't do great here in the spring, but I feel like Darlington was a step in the right direction. Kind of how I feel about Hamlin because Hamlin was, has been looking for that win all year. He finally gets it and is really good at Richmond, really good at Bristol. Harvard could do the same thing. He could pull off a win, whether it's here or anywhere else and ride a few more wins and route to the final round of the playoffs. I think I agree. Like I said, I think Harvard could actually pull off a win in these final uh, races too. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Uh, Adam, like I said, you are a Virginia boy at Richmond, the beautiful track there. We've seen some races. It's been interesting that there's been big wrecks. A lot of them have been taken out. I think about the 2004 fall race. I think of the spring race from 2008 for Richmond. And then also there's an interesting stat where there were two races where everyone was running at the finish. What race do you expect? Do you expect more of a chaotic Richmond or do you expect more of like a, a lawful good type of Richmond? Well, the lawful good side of me says last week was chaotic at Darlington. Everyone's going to play it super safe. But at the same time, it's Richmond. It's what I consider a short track. It's the playoffs. And Richmond can be chaotic. You know, we had that incident a few years ago where Matt Kenseth hit the ambulance. Um on pit road and we had a crash like a huge wreck in the first few laps of the playoff race back in like or the end of the season race back in 2011 there's the potential for both here but i think richmond's such a different animal from a lot of other tracks on the circuit that and the playoffs are so up in the air this year with so many different winners and how crazy last week was that people are going to be fighting for every inch i mean alex bowman won here in the spring and he had a bad week last week at darlington's so there's a i mean I would expect him to be a little more aggressive than normal. William Byron, I wouldn't be surprised if this race kind of goes off the rails very quickly. Yeah, there's quite a few good drivers that are near and or below that cut line, too. Uh, Adam, I am ready for my favorite segment. It's called Stump or Bump. It's our good old trivia question, too. Uh, we've had a recent string of luck. Uh, Zach got the question uh, right last week with Mr. September. Uh, this week, I want to touch on how Richmond and Phoenix are relatively similar, and Phoenix is the championship race. My question to you is, who was the last driver to win at Richmond and then win the championship in the same season? Bear with me a minute. I can get this. I'm pretty sure I can get this. Truex nearly did in 2017, but Larson ended up winning that. Hmm. Wow, that is tough. I have to like go back like 15 years in my head. 
Uh, I almost need one of those like Jeopardy time countdown times. <laughs> um, I'm going to say. Mm. I'm going to say Jimmy Johnson, 2008. Adam, you bumped it again. That is correct. Yay. Jimmy Johnson won the fall race in 2008. And that was actually one of the races that everyone was running at the finish of the race. So congrats well, I, to you. I have to credit. <laughs> you bumped it I out of the way again. <laughs> I have to credit Alex Bowman because I remember writing that recap. And one of the things was it's the first time that the 48 has been to victory lane at Richmond since like 2008. And I was like, wow. Jimmy won the title that year. So thank you, Alex. Where, wherever you are. <laughs> Absolutely. So Adam, like I said, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to have our picks for the race too. I'm going to pick someone I picked last week, Denny Hamlin, and he went on to win too. I'm actually going to pick him again. I am. Like I said, Hamlin has been running pretty good at Richmond, too. This has been a Joe Gibbs slash Penske race type of racetrack, too. Yeah. So I'm going to ride that momentum, ride history, and uh, take Diddy Hamlin to win. Well, I'm Are in you, the same boat. You're in the same <laughs> boat. You're actually going to pick yeah. the hometown boy? Yeah, I got to. He, I think Brian and I talked about this on the Stock Car Scoop podcast and everything where you know, this season has reminded me a lot of 2011. You've got all these guys that are all these different winners, a bunch of first time winners. And then Tony Stewart doesn't win a race all year, goes out in the playoffs and rips off five in a row, including the opener. I could totally see Denny Hamlin doing that this year. And this is a track that's been good to him. He hasn't won here in five years. I I'm on board with Denny. And I think we'll see that 11 and victory lane uh, come about 10, maybe 11 o'clock. <laughs> well, like I said, he might be the spoon man as uh Adam Cheek likes to drop those Soundgarden reference too. So from everyone here <laughs> from frontstretch.com at Richmond here, Adam Cheek live at location too. Um, you can follow Adam, Adam Cheek at Adam and Cheek. You can follow us at front stretch at front stretch and at frontstretch.com. And from everyone there, have a great race weekend.